Hey Eurovision fans, it's Tom coming to you from Dublin and back for another Eurovision reaction video. Today I'm going to be reacting to DGT by Theodore Andre. He's representing Romania in Eurovision 2023. I'm going to listen and react and see how this could do in Liverpool. So let's kiki. As always, you can use the podcast bar if you want to skip straight to my reaction. It's usually after around three minutes. First, let's talk about Romania. So Romania have a reputation for being a little bit messy. They had all the voting scandal last year and then you know the disqualification in 2016 <clears throat> and then having to withdraw the year after that. But I, I, they're very beloved. I really do love Romania in the competition. I think they had a lot of kind of out there, out there brave entries. I really, really, really like them. So I'm very glad that they didn't withdraw after last what happened last year they had a tv show a couple of months after the final last year where they were actually debating whether they should stay in the competition or not and the whole community we had to get together to vote to keep them in because there were more people for withdrawing and then there was a big twitter twitter campaign and we managed to get it that they the vote was to stay <laughs> i'm not sure if the vote would have been legally binding or anything but it was still quite alarming that the community had to work to keep them in the, the competition potentially Romania have been in the top 10 five times, which is pretty good. Uh, th two top three finishes with Playing With Fire, which is my favorite song in, in 2010. And Let Me Try, which was in my top three in 2005. It wasn't very difficult to get to my top three in 2005. I thought that was quite a weak year. But yeah, really iconic entries. On a Sunday, I loved another that didn't do well, but I was one of my favorite songs that year. Rocks In, that, I remember 2020 when she had that five song national final. Oh, all five of those songs were absolutely amazing. That actually, that period gave me hope that we were going to have those songwriters for like years. And unfortunately, they seem to have disappeared because I thought their music production was really excellent. So kind of sad that that happened. Romania did have that three-year non-qualification streak after previously being qualification gods where they literally qualified every single year. And then they went on a three non-qualification streak, which was very strange. There was that mix-up where I just don't feel maybe they were moving with the times quickly enough. But they qualified again last year with WRS, who I felt was a bit of a one-man show. He wrote the song, he choreographed it, he danced it all. He was just an amazing star. And that song did really, really well. Very popular in the community. Did very well in Spain as well. Uh, so this year, I re reacted to all 10 songs in Seleccionale Nacional. I'll leave a link up in the in the eye in the top right corner. I think I'll put DGT as my number two. I thought it just had a kind of like a very fresh sound and I actually really liked his performance style which I felt was very immersive and intense and he left me a nice little message on my video as well after that. I watched maybe half of the national final, it was hard because there were so many going on. I did see his performance, I did react to it on Twitter. So yeah, this is my second time watching it but I'm still looking forward to it. Yeah, I was surprised by how many people in the national final absolutely and utterly flopped and he wasn't one of them a large proportion of his competition just eliminated themselves from being like very bad. Theodore Andre won on a secret band. He's very young as well. He's 18. Very, very young. I love it. What a great start. I actually miss this bit where he's riding. Now, the girls are very risky. <laughs> a risque. Um, I don't know if that's going to come across well in your vision, but it still is striking opening. He's got a great performance intensity, real confident, um, like an actor selling the performance at such a young age is really incredible. His lyrics are fine. I don't think the lyrics, are the, his vocals, I mean, I don't think the vocals are the most important part of this, to be honest. It's more the attitude. First costume reveal, amazing. Just amazing, I love it. <laughs> but this is the bit where he shines. When he's getting like real raw and stanky and kind of up in the camera and kind of like it's like he's ad libbing, he feels very free. Now the song is good. I think it can cleaned up, be cleaned up a little bit. And Romania do do that, so I think they'll elevate a little bit more. But his performance style, he's already got down perfectly. It's really great. You can kind of see the mate love that war under his t-shirt already. I didn't notice that during the performance though. Now vocally that's very good. There's lots going on as well. The LEDs are grand. I think that those could probably be improved a little bit. Um, but behind them there's lots going on. It's not very entertaining. It's like a burlesque show. And you know, I just think he, he hits all the marks and it's not awkward. His transitions are really smooth. Like, he's talented. You cannot deny that he's a talented performer. 
I'm defending him because he's getting so much hate on Twitter. I have a feeling a little bit like WRS as well that this is him, this is all his ideas. I love she's got the voodoo done. <laughs> I don't know idea what's going on lyrically. And we got some naked dudes, why not? This horn section now sounds a little bit cheap. I think that could be made a bit more expensive. Oh! What? What? How did she change from no place to cl Was that a magic trick? I need to go watch that back at the end. So Dejete, I have to work out what that means. God, he's just, he's fantastic. I think he's very likable. There's something about him that's very, I don't know. Uh, right, people are gonna love that nose, even though it's a little bit off. <laughs> it's just, people are gonna find this really entertaining. Like it's just, it's a show. That, and that three minutes flies by. You know, there's, there's really some songs I just... I have to go back and look at the magic trick because I wasn't sure. It looked like the girl was, like, in her underwear and then suddenly she was wearing a black dress. I have to go back and watch that again. <laughs> yeah, what the hell? That's so weird. I'm going to replay it for you because this is really where what happens. Look here. She's, she's in the nip and then she's wearing a dress. And then she's in the nip again. And now she's in a dress. <laughs> okay, it's not a magic trick. What the hell is happening? I get. I don't understand that. But I don't know if it's just like that they've actually just melded like the rehearsal with the actual final performance. They've mel mixed them together or something else. But <laughs> that was. <laughs> I got really confused when I was watching the original video. Okay, look. I really, 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 really like this. I picked it out in my ori original reaction in when I listened to all the songs because it sounds so different. It really does sound unique. It's got like a real uh, self-written kind of like busker. Not amateur feel, but kind of like very um, like raw, uh, real, just like a real kind of like passion song. And it's got a different sound than we're used to hearing in Eurovision. It's kind of like a little bit indie, a little bit rock. It's mostly pop, but it's it just differentiates itself. And I think he's a real star. He's very magnetic. There's something about him that's like very charming and likable. And I get the impression a lot of that show is his design. He's had a lot of planning in it. Uh, you know, he starts off as like an innocent schoolboy and then he's with the burlesque girls and then he's doing all these costume reveals. There's just a lot of entertaining things that are going on and this is with the national final so I would expect it to elevate even more. Um, the girls are very risque dressed. I don't know if that's going to pass with, with Eurovision as well. I'm not sure if it like slightly detracts from the performance a little bit. I do know with Azerbaijan, Matt the Harry, they were quite scantily clad as well. I don't know what the line is in terms of how scanty you can, how scantily clad you can be. Um, but yeah, in, in any case, that's not a massive issue. I think there's a lot of fun stuff going on. I would like a little bit of an uh, revamp here. I think musically it's in a good place. I would just maybe like a little bit more highs and lows, which is something I ask for a lot in my songs. And there's some parts of it where the horn section just sounds like maybe a little bit budget. I would like that to just sound a little bit more expensive. But yeah, I think he, I think the real selling point here is him. I think he's the magic and he's going to bring this live. I, at this point in time, I'm really looking at this as a contender in semi-final two. Now, I'm not saying it's definite, but with a televote only, I think his televote score is going to be better than his jury score. Definitely. I think his televote score would be better than his jury score. Definitely. So already that plays to his advantage. They don't have Moldova in their semi-final this year. Yeah, he's in the first half of the second semi, so yeah, I, I think I think it would be nice if you got in a draw like I would not like this to be like drawn second. I don't think it would open, there would be a weird opener. I hope that they get a slightly later in the draw. It'd be nice to see them get a little bit of luck. I'm not sure though if the EBU will kind of like want to punish them a little bit for being a little bit naughty last year. But look, it, yeah, for me, the whole thing is in his performance quality, and that was really noticeable when looking at all the other acts. Like I saw statues and I saw the end of Aladida and I saw Lele as well. They were all just really car crashy. Their vocals were just really off. I was surprised with Statue because he's Andre is such a strong singer, but that staging was just really messy. The backing vocals were too loud and they were singing over him. And then it was like the song was called Statues, so they were statues, which was just like, this isn't Junior Eurovision. You know, you need to do a little bit better than that. 
Although, actually, having said that, I would actually like if Romani were in Junior Vision. I think that they need the extra, extra practice for staging. Yeah, I felt like everyone else just eliminated themselves. They were just bad. It was a little bit like Harmonia Dissonance and in Indoor this year. Like, literally, they just took themselves out of the running by not being able to perform. And that's the most, that's the safest thing about this is that he is a great performer. He's just natural. He just likes performing. You can just tell some people are able to do it and some people just freeze under the spotlight and he is the former. Uh, he seems very likable as well. So yeah, I'm really, really wishing him well. It's, I think it's so incredible that someone who's 18 can put on such a show and you'd expect that if he goes to, if he forms a little bit more and gets more practice, he's only going to improve. But I like that style where he's getting up and close to the camera and he feels like really authentic and real and raw and he's just like giving it his everything and just putting himself out there kind of like a vulnerability so yeah like to see the song revamped a tiny bit but i think this has got a great shot of qualifying from the first half of the set the first half of the second semi-final let's have a little look and see how it's doing currently in the rankings it is currently second last now as i said i have seen that some people are kind of hating about in the center there are actually a couple of people as well who are really liking it as well but to be honest, that's not massively surprising. Um, he beat out some girly bops, and the community does like girly bops. So I know Aladita was a favorite with blah, 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 and she didn't go through. So Statues, I think, was pretty popular. And Furnace, Statues absolutely definitely would not have qualified. That performance was just not good enough. And that's coming from someone who that was my most played song from the selection going into it. And he was one of my favorites. I even put it on my wish list that I hoped that Andre would win. And then I saw the performance. I was like, oh, do not send that. That is an unqualification. So yeah, uh, being 14, being low down in the community rankings, I, I wouldn't expect a song like this to rate highly. So I, did, I wouldn't be too concerned with that. Anything in the odds? We don't have semi-final odds yet. He's currently second last in the odds. I think that's a bit extreme. It would be great if Romania could get back on a qualification streak. It would be two in a row. Would love to see that happen. Keep the theatrics of the national final performance. Keep the excellent performer and just elevate everything else a little bit. And I think they'll be good. Okay, that's what I thought about DGT by Theodore Andre representing Romania. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in another reaction video very soon. Goodbye. Blah, 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 blah.